have to come down one more in the line. Hello, my friends. I've been excited about this one tonight. I got a special guest in here with me tonight. This is John from Creekstone Farms in Kansas. Hello, John, and welcome. Thanks for having me, Robert. It's great we, to be here. Been looking forward to this. We've got a good chance to have fun tonight and talk about all of our kind of favorite subject in brisket. <laughs> So we're going to uh, try to stay right on point on the brisket while we've got you here, John. We're going to talk mostly all about brisket tonight, Sounds but I'm, I'm glad to, to have you here. Uh, but of course, I am going to call out that that is the great Steely Dan in the background. We were talking about music <laughs> earlier, and both of us have a real affinity for Steely Dan, so yeah. those guys are getting featured tonight. But uh, John, tell us about you and then we're going to start talking about your product yeah so uh named john and selmo with uh, i'm the regional sales manager for the southeast for creekstone farms premium black angus beef and pork um i grew up in the meat business my family had a company in birmingham alabama called sre foods um we were acquired in 2017 by u.s foods a lot of people have seen those trucks around their second largest food service company in America and uh, kind of been a journeyman of late. Uh, been in production most of my career, a little bit of sales um, intertwined, but spent a lot of time in production floors. So food service, cut steaks, ground beef patties you would eat at a restaurant. And spent a lot of time in that and um, actually was a purchaser of Creekstone Farms at three different spots along the way, including SRE Foods and uh, the first company. And so I got to be familiar with the quality and the consistency and an opportunity came around uh, around September last year to interview for a job at Creekstone Farms. And uh, my I call him my predecessor. He's still around on this farewell tour, John Leland. My friend, John Leland. And hello, John. I hope you're watching tonight. John was my initial contact at Creekstone and John and I, uh, along with our partners at Wood Frutiker in Birmingham, yeah. Wood Frutiker kind of, we, we all came together when the restaurant started. John, Wood Frutiker, and LEQ, we came together over Creekstone. Yeah. And so, hello, John. Yeah. Happy retirement for you, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, John's on his farewell tour, so he uh, was. <laughs> We talked, the uh, bosses in a creep center let me have some of his territory so we could have a nice transition, and it's been fun. We work as teammates, and so do all the RSNs and the sales managers at Creek Center. We have a great group of te uh, great group of people, great teamwork we have, and uh, so yeah, I came on in early October, and as my boss put it when we were, we were interviewing, you know, I have a lot of operations experience, not too much direct sales, and uh, but he said, look, man, you've been selling Creekstone for a long time, so this should be easy for you. So that's that's right. Well, that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. And uh, folks in the background, Steph is back there. Say hello, Sugar. Hello. <laughs> and she's watching the computer, so she will see. Um, it'll pop up. Steph and I share a Facebook, so when you see Robert Wardlaw pop up on there in a comment, that's us, and she's sitting right here with us. Lisa says she loves the product, and Lisa is a regular in here and a great friend. And uh, hello, Billy Jackson, how are you, my friend? And Mama, there's Pookie. Hello, John and son, she said. And hello to you, Steph. And Lisa says hi to you, too. You see that already. So, John, talk to us about... Um, I made a couple of notes here of things that I want us to make sure and cover some things, but the show is yours tonight. You know, I want to focus on Creekstone while we have you here. There's uh, almost everyone that's watching uh, is a fan of the brisket here. It is our number one selling product in this restaurant, which in the state of Georgia, I'm sure, would not be uh, what you all would think of as yeah. normal. So uh, I just made a note here for you to talk about, talk some things about the legacy of brisket in Texas, which is where brisket really, yep. and I know it has a great history on the chuck wagons when they were moving cattle across uh, 
during the, the frontier days, but and then transition a little bit into what brisket is in Georgia. But start us with uh, the <coughs> Texas piece of it. So yes, I actually did a little history lesson, to, you know, myself for the show to kind of look into the background of how brisket came to be, and you know. Uh, it's a lot different. It's changed over the last, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. You know, brisket wasn't something that was considered a high-quality cut. Um, you know, the brisket comes from the breast of the animal. It's a pectoral muscle. Uh, two pectoral muscles make up a what we would call a packer brisket, which you would see up here and are used to seeing. Yeah, they um, ask me all the time <laughs> while I'm walking around the tables, like, where does the brisket come from? And I don't get all the way on my all fours, but I show them it's, <laughs> yeah. it's right here. It'd be yeah. the pecs on a human being, and it. Uh, we get a good laugh about that. I do not go down for a full demonstration of where it would be. Uh, yeah, so that's true. It's a, it's a pect it's two pectoral muscles make up a packer brisket, as we would call it. Um, it's a tough muscle, just as is, right? Um, the, a lot of the weight of the animal is on that front leg, and so it gets a lot of work. So it's nothing like a tender one, which gets no work and is the most tender muscle on the animal. Um, so obviously... There's a lot of process needs to go into making brisket have the flavor and tenderness that you want to have a good eating experience. Um, a lot of brisket early on was uh, it actually has some Jewish tradition, uh, being kosher. And, All right, uh, right, yeah. right, yeah. And I was telling Robert earlier uh, with kind of the Coca-Cola background that uh, in Atlanta, once uh, Coca-Cola received a kosher certification, um, and also brisket was kosher. That was a very popular uh, Jewish delicacy. Well, uh, Coca -Cola yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, in a pressure cooker. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, I believe so. Meat for kind of a beginner's, you know, kind of background on how meat is spec'd out. There's a, a series of three numbers. Uh, Packer briskets is one two zero one twenty. Is the, the kind of meat standards of kind of a meat buyer's guide. Some people have seen it, and you'll you can actually Google it. There's some really good links. Texas A&M does a great job of breaking it down for people that are new to uh, beef. But uh, really, a Packer brisket wasn't really recognized until 1958 um, when the, the Meat Buyer's Guide came out and really described what a brisket was. And then even back then, it was part of uh, my dad, my family's business, my family's background in the meat business. My grandfather had retail butcher shops in North Birmingham. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. I think I left that out. <laughs> um, and so my dad would break down retail front quarters of beef in high school and college when he worked at the meat markets. And actually, an old-style way of cutting down a front quarter would actually cut through part of that brisket muscle. So one of the first times he broke it down for me, he showed me and said, hey, look, this is how we used oh, to cut. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so really the advent of boxed beef in the mid-'60s, 1965, um, where you have the what you see a vacuum impact brisket, really wasn't around before 1965, before uh, when there was quarters of beef. So. Yeah, I've always understood that in the, in those frontier days, that was a throwaway piece of meat. They were putting that on the chuck wagons because it was the yeah. wealthy merchants in the, in the towns and the mm -hmm. settlements were keeping all the, the best nice, yeah, cuts, the and they were saying, yeah. give the cowboys... <laughs> the brisket and now yeah. the brisket yeah. is the sure. well among the most expensive of all the cuts now because of yeah. demand and but it is a by its nature a tough mm -hmm. cut of meat relative to the other parts of the cow but yeah. we like it all of us brisket people all my <laughs> buddies out there that yeah. cook it as well i was going to go back while you're talking and uh yeah. so see some of these um Comments. comments. Yeah. yeah, and I don't want to miss those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, you guys from Creekstone. Hello, friends at Creekstone. Uh, how are y'all tonight? Melody, thank you, my friend. Jeff says best brisket ever. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Alan, I see your question about how can a rookie pit master like me acquire some of the Creekstone beef, and I think Creekstone at your headquarters. Someone must be at your yeah, headquarters are. right now. It's Jackie or Courtney right now. Hello, Jackie Martin. or Courtney, <laughs> shout Martin. out. Yeah. Hello, but uh, they linked, uh, they gave you a link to Creekstone how uh, that can be bought at uh, retail, I guess, or online. Yeah. Ah, my friends in Chattooga County. Hello, Joe Money. 
Tracy, thank you. My brother Marlon Thompson. Marlon owns a meat uh, processing company here in town. He's been Marlon's been my friend for many years, but he knows a lot about cutting meat. Uh, let's see. What are we missing here? Okay. Oh, and Marlon says it's a great crock pot stew meat. And of course, Cuban up brisket in a stew is amazing. Who's in Birmingham? There's That's my wife. There's Hello, your Angela. wife. Hello, Angela. I'm Angela and my little almost seven month old son, Christopher. Hello. Sure, he's right there with her, so hello to both of y'all. And hello, Teresa, my <laughs> friend. It's good to see you on here. Uh, what is Lisa saying there? Uh, look forward to coming this week. Teresa says, Lisa says, at one time we had 14 briskets in our freezer when the Amish busher, <laughs> they yeah, don't eat it, they give it. Oh, nice. Deal. Okay, <laughs> we'll take that. Yeah. Teresa's coming to eat with us this week. Can't wait. Uh, Oh, and thank you, Jeff. Just says it starts out tough, but when we get done with it, it's tender. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. There's Tony uh, with Why Not Georgia Barbecue. Tony is a great ambassador of barbecue in the state of Georgia. He has a, a group that uh, he travels everywhere and is among the greatest promoters, uh, along with my friend Steve. Uh, between Steve and Tony, they are they have two huge uh, sites, groups, and I mean I'm talking about in the tens of thousands of people. And Tony goes everywhere and promotes, and so, so does my friend Steve Everett. I haven't seen him on here yet, but he'll be on here. Hi, Danielle. Hey, Jerry. How are you, buddy? It's good to see you, my friend. So. Uh, the transition from Texas and how Georgia, how is brisket in Georgia these days? It's relatively new to us. Sure. I'm from here. I'm a Georgia boy. I did spend uh, eight years in Texas when I worked for Coca-Cola. So yeah. I'm very much a, uh, a friend to the state of Texas, but I'm not a Texan. Mm -hmm. I'm from Georgia and I can tell you for sure growing up, uh, Brisket is not is not part of the tradition of what we have done historically in Georgia. Yeah. So, tell the folks about what role brisket plays in the state of Georgia these days. Yeah, well, like you said, uh, kind of from Birmingham, uh, just watching and being in the barbecue business in the South, right, most of my life and growing up around it. You know, pork is king, right? So, whole shoulders was whole shoulders, and then. You have Boston butt breakdown and pork shoulder picnic. You see a lot of that across the South. Whole hog, bar whole hog, bar whole hog barbecue in yeah. West Tennessee and in the Carolinas. So you know pork is you know the South, but uh, I really think you know you know your Coca Cola background and what I've seen in Atlanta, kind of you know Atlanta being what it is a business hub and a lot of people moving to Atlanta for jobs. And I think they wanted to see that brisket that you see in Texas. You've had people who've moved from Texas, uh, got a good friend who's also part of the Creekstone family that buys uh, Creekstone product in Atlanta. Okay. He uh, actually partnered with somebody from Texas to kind of bring that style. He had a traditional barbecue, you know, Georgia Southern pork style barbecue. And he brought a guy from Texas and partnered up. Is that the spot. Fox Brothers? Uh, this is a... They, those guys are from from Texas. They're, they're from Texas, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, and but I was uh, Robert at Grand Champion Barbecue. He was Champion, uh, okay. West Georgia Smyrna. He actually uh, he uh, bought in Brian from Texas, and they have Owens and Hole there in, in Smyrna, and they're doing they're part of the Creekstone family. They're buying our product, and uh, again, you know, you see. Um, I really think that's where it comes from. You know, people yeah. wanted to see that style of barbecue. You go out there and try it. Um, you know, my uncle actually was part of the, the business and the big, I was showing you some of his uh, barbecue he makes on the Yoder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, looked, and, uh, it looked great, too. Yeah. And I remember when John Leland and I first started talking, and yeah. John was uh, reminding me as we were getting started that <laughs> brisket is not a yeah. primary in the state of Georgia. Right. And I was yeah. saying, John, yeah. just believe in me now. Yeah. Just believe in me because I love the brisket. and. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, 
I hope we've proven to be a good yeah, well, and you see it. So, you know, a lot of people brought brisket into this area and did it in traditional methods. The box smokers, you know, like you would do pork. And like I was saying, my uncle went out to Austin, actually has some in-laws that live out there and got to see Lockhart's, uh, Franklin, and got to visit some Louis Mueller's, and you get to see the offsets, the, like the lanes that you have. Right. And you really get to understand it's it's not just something, it's not a time, temp, and wood thing. There's a process, and <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot more in-depth in than just cooking barbecue like you would cook a Boston butt or something else and I think that's what's uh, made it so special to have it here in Georgia now the way it is and it continues to grow. I have more people ask for our product in the Atlanta area and, and it's been uh, it's, it's really interesting because uh, I grew up in the south in the meat business where it was all pork and pork and pork. <laughs> so yeah and I maybe. think maybe uh, <laughs> this north northwest Georgia corner I guess I guess has uh, we've maybe elevated through your company and our and what is consumed here at this sure. restaurant uh, I don't know where we would rank in the in the state but I think as far as brisket users for Creekstone uh, number one you guys use more Creekstone product than any brisket user here in the state of Georgia and there's no two ways about that yeah yeah I, um, I think that uh we all have there's a an affinity for the brisket now but you know when we first opened uh, and many of my friends watching this right now would attest to this there's uh there's no doubt about it if people were coming in here and uh hearing about brisket but they're like oh, i don't really like brisket yeah. it's dry it's yeah. tough and i and for that first, I don't know, honey, what, for six months, I think I cut just one slice to everybody that was saying, I don't like brisket, brisket is dry and tough. And I was cutting them a slice and they're like, oh my gosh, yeah. it's not dry and tough. But by its nature, it will be, it has to be cooked right. properly. But now uh, brisket, we sell more brisket. Uh, overall, we sell more brisket than we do pork here. Mm -hmm. It's That's remarkable. something to be said in this part. It's of not by <laughs> much, but it it is the number one seller. There's Jerry. He said you changed my mind on brisket. <laughs> Here's Russ Tanner, my friend. How are you, buddy? I can't wait for you to come here, Russ. Uh, great lover and ambassador of barbecue in the state of Georgia. He's a former. Outstanding football player at the University of Georgia, and Russ uh, Russ does uh, reviews. He travels all around the state and does reviews okay. on places, yeah. and Russ hasn't made it here yet. He's coming. Okay. He says, save me a slice. I'll have you plenty of slices, brother. I promise you that. Uh, I think that kind of speaks to, you know, people's experience with brisket elsewhere. You know, like I said earlier, you know, you can buy a good brisket. You can... You can, you know, cook it to what seems like, you know, the right temp or the right time with the right wood. And But it's all about a, a, the process and what goes into cooking brisket. You and I walked through the, some of the final steps today. <laughs> yes, and, uh, uh, it was perfect timing. And, mm -hmm. of course, you know, this is a cook day uh, for service tomorrow. And John got here at the right time to actually see how Sack and I do the briskets and I just say Bruce because as far as brisket goes in here it's Bruce and it's me yeah. and uh, my friend uh, Joseph Phillips has learned how to trim so once uh, the machine retired uh, the Joseph spent six weeks with the machine practicing trimming and Bruce and I still go in there and work with Joseph but he's done a great job the trim is very 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 important okay. it can't be overlooked so Joseph and Bruce and I are the brisket people in here but John got here at the perfect time today to see the brisket during the wrapping process and then he saw the resting process in here and then watch me put those sweet babies to yeah. <laughs> to bed for the night to get ready for tomorrow's service. Hey, Mark, thank you, buddy. Mark says he gets plenty on his plate. 
and my friend Becky Rutledge that came in last week, and I'm so sorry we didn't get to visit. It was a little bit tight in here. I'm sorry I didn't get to step down and come hug your neck. I love you, Becky. It was great to see you and Lindsay and the whole crew, always. Uh, let's see, Brian. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we catered it. Yeah, uh, I think I saw that order. <laughs> yes, you saw. You actually, you actually cut. <laughs> okay. So I had I had John stand with me yeah. while I cut yours tonight, Brian, and and I let him see what his product can look like. Uh, it's one thing to be the supplier of things; it's another to actually watch your end user yeah, no and what they make out of your. Yeah. your fine briskets but what it turns into at eating time and Brian has been a great uh, a great great friend to us and and so I assume you've already eaten in the grits green beans sausage and corn what what a perfect treat I think we Robert you and I we maybe snuck a slice or two off yes. this brisket so we it was good I mean, yeah <laughs> yeah Brian don't think that I didn't um, Use some quality control with what little was left of that whole brisket that we uh, you didn't sure already right. order. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Brian man. says, well done to you. Praise God. Gary, my man, best brisket ever. Gary's my long-term friend. Gary and I have known each other since we were teenagers. Cameron Cordell, Southern Singe Hot Sauce. My friend Cameron Cordell. He's developed uh, an amazing hot sauce. It's called Southern Singe, and it's about to be a commercial product. And when it is, it's going to be on the tables right here in this restaurant at all times. <laughs> Brian says, yeah, they've already eaten all that. So whatever we cut, it's a good thing we uh, quality controlled that during right. the cutting process. Well, I saw a comment. Yeah, Mark. I saw a comment up there. I was going to give Mark a roll tie, but I saw a go dog, so I better keep it quiet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got plenty of roll tide friends in here. Yes, you got plenty of roll tide people in this place for sure. No, no question about that. And you know, hey, my fellow, my my fellow Yellow Jackets, they come in here too. Yeah. But you know, there's. Honestly, we end up having more Tennessee and sure. Alabama fans than yeah. there's uh, than we do Tech fans. But I've got <laughs> from all my time at Coca Cola and all my friends from uh, my friends at Texas A and M, my friends at Mississippi State, at Ole Miss, the University of Georgia, and uh, the old SEC. Tennessee. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I've, we got friends all over the place in my time in Montgomery of course I met so many uh, beautiful Alabama and Auburn people there working with so many people and we just all love college football around here it's just a passion for us and, uh, to all my friends in Athens I love you guys that was a, a great time and we were so successful and I was there uh, with the team in Athens, and we were there during the Olympics, so we oh, had the we were hosting yeah. the Olympics. And oh, yes. uh, one real quick story about that that yeah. all my Athens people that are watching tonight will remember. This was before 9/11. This was in 1996 when Atlanta hosted, but Athens was a host city as well, and the sure. soccer was done in Sanford Stadium. Weeks and weeks and weeks before. The Olympics. The FBI was in there, in our facility, and I was like, "What the heck are y'all doing?" And they had these machines that they would put up yeah. under the trucks, and I thought, "What in the heck?" <laughs> now that would be. Now I know what they were doing. Sure. At the time, I was like, sure. "Who are you guys? Why are you looking up under the, the coke trucks?" And they were, yeah. they were taking precautions because the coke trucks are among the freest movers of, you sure, know, when yeah. a coat truck pulls up, it's just let it's them a, in, it's right? It's a trusted brand. <laughs> and so we had them on site there in our warehouse in Athens for weeks and weeks and weeks checking every single one of our route trucks before it went out 
anywhere near that stadium. They did a fantastic job keeping everybody safe. Fantastic job. So um, let's talk about why, I mean, I tell people on here all the time, John, why we use Creekstone. Okay. But tell them, tell the folks why you believe we make the right choice using Creekstone. Yeah, so, you know, our mission statement at Creekstone Farms is to, you know, procure and provide the world's finest black Angus beef. That's our tagline. And uh, when I say tagline, there's so much that goes into it. And uh, so if you know, uh, around in, in the U.S., there's about right around 600,000 head of cattle, you know, harvested a week. Um, Creekstone makes up right at 1% of that. So, okay, so we're boutique, we're niche. Um, and when it comes to, you know, the quality of the cattle, I was actually with uh, an acquaintance in the business. You meet business, you call them friends. It's usually acquaintances, people you talk to. Um, and uh, she a, owns a small company and is in the Georgia Cattlemen's Association. And we were talking about the purebred genetics. You know, we have 100% black Angus genetics. So our cattle... We're verifying that all four grandparents of the animals have purebred black Angus genetics. And so I was talking to her, and she, uh, I was, we were talking about the price of cattle being high, and you know, we pay a premium above USDA prices for USDA. I'm choices. very familiar. <laughs> I'm familiar with that. We pay a premium, <laughs> right? And so, <laughs> no I love you, buddy, but I'm very familiar with <laughs> the, the premium. premium. So that's why we put premium in our uh, our brand Creekstone Farms premium black Angus beef. <laughs> but, uh, so I was talking to her and she goes, "Well, you guys are buying real cattle. Brenda's not buying something off a of feedlot from who knows where." So uh, Ang- you know, Angus cattle, you know, they have superior muscle muscling. The 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 animals receive feed very well, so they marble very well. All the the intermuscular marbling that provides the flavor we all love in a in a great cut of beef that renders really well in a brisket and has that distinct flavor. Um, that's the, what the purebred genetics along with our corn-fed diet provide. Over and over again, we have a consistent, non, it's, it's really, in my experience, I've never, again, that's why I work here, <laughs> never really seen in my experience a beef that can perform day in and day out. Well, uh, John shared with me mm-hmm. earlier the latest Creekstone marketing yeah. video and I think if you send me that I'm going to post, post that yeah. either after the show tonight or tomorrow mm-hmm. I think you guys would yeah. be it was fascinating and it's yeah. only six minutes long but it packs a lot of information into those six yeah. minutes and yeah. what was that test uh, that you were telling me that it's something very unique I think yeah. to Creekstone about a test on uh, the whole carcass yeah, you. It, it was an acronym or a bunch of numbers. What? Oh, the, like the O seven or O one seven five. Yeah. So you know, being boutique. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being special and standing out in what we do. So we have our hundred percent black Angus genetics. We have you know our rancher partners we work with that basically raise cattle for us. Um, just one of the many facets of you know what we do at Creekstone's food safety. Okay, so uh, I think everybody's familiar with from really from 1993 on with E. coli and you know it's, yeah, the, it's yeah, the big yeah. it's the big E word in our business um, it's a pathogen that you know comes from uh, it's an enteric bacteria and it's a big problem in the beef industry or was a big problem uh, the industry and the USDA have done a tremendous job over the last 20, 30 years since 1993 really uh, it's become an adulterant and we, we take it a step further so uh as I said, in my background in operations where you have beef coming into a production room at a USDA facility, cutters cutting it, and some of the beef gets ground, some of it gets cut for steaks, um, you know, we, we take food step safety a step further, and we actually test anything that's not even going into ground beef, right? So we understand why ground beef has to be cooked to a certain temperature to kill E. coli because you've taken what's on the outside and put it on the inside of the beef product. Steaks... You know, you're always cooking the outside. Ground beef's not that way. Well, at Creekstone, we take it another step, and we actually test the whole carcass for E. coli. So we don't okay. even have that worry downstream. So even if that beef is not intended to be ground into ground beef products, 
we're still testing it before it gets to the floor. So you have that extra step of safety. And that's just one of the many things we do to go above and beyond. And you know how that relates to us. And I'm going to talk to my friends out there that eat in here all the time. I don't know if you know this or not, but we take all of the trimming from the brisket and we have a sausage program that we make our own sausage in here. And it's yep. a robust program. We make 450, <laughs> 500 links out of the 100 plus briskets that we move through here every week. And we make our own sausage. And what you just said, we don't Grind, we don't do hamburgers, so mm -hmm. we, you know, I know the, the food safety piece focuses a lot on ground up sure. meat. So of course we're grinding. It's great to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, we do take an extra step and utilize some pink salt in all, yeah. just as an extra step, and that's primarily a pork type situation most smoke. people most people do not utilize that step with beef which right. is a lot less yeah. sensitive to mm -hmm. problems than pork ground up pork mm -hmm. sausage and, and ours is an all beef sausage but knowing that the product is already tested sure. is a, is uh, it's very comforting from for your end user we well, still have things to worry about here in the store, right? You're making sides, you're making desserts, right? You're making sauces, and you know you've got prep guys doing several different things, trimming, and it just uh, again, it's one of the many reasons, you know, again we like I went back to the beginning. Yeah, it's hard to be the best black Angus beef, and food safety has to be part of being the best. Excellent, excellent. Oh, and whoever's back at the headquarters is doing a great job yeah. uh, linking things for all of us, and I'm going to go back and read these things. Thanks, Mark. Mark says an incredibly informative show tonight. Thank you, buddy. And Becky, I hope you ate more than one time with those huge portions you're talking about. Hey, Jeff, how are you, brother? It's good to see you on here, buddy. Uh, get a few more. See me scrub a little more. I saw somebody. Oh, did we miss some stuff? Let's see. I think we got a shout out. Oh, Tony. Tony, brother, thank you. He says, thanks for taking pride in what we sell and serve. Thank you, brother. Paul and Stephanie are coming Saturday. Yes. Charlie says, don't forget the Boomer Sooners. There you yeah, go, we're talking buddy. About the SEC, we got to talk about And there's John there's Leland, Don Leland, my man. Great job, 2.0. John 2.0. Hey, is that what they call you, John 2.0? So, yeah. so John and I have a, a – I used to call him and – being a beef vendor, he was my rep at Creekstone when I was buying it. Oh, okay. I'd always ask him because I knew he would be up. He's an early riser, and on Eastern time, I'm in Alabama Central time. And he said, John, how's it going, dude? He goes, oh, not bad for an old goat. <laughs> Seen everybody uses the term goat, greatest of all time. I said, so we're the, yeah. he calls himself the old goat. I'm the new goat. <laughs> the new goat. There you <laughs> so go, a buddy. Inside joke. Uh, one of the elephants and not your roll tide elephant, oh. the price. Sure. A bad gum brisket. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It yeah. feels as if it's at an all time high. Mm -hmm. tell, tell us yeah. about and it hasn't it hasn't affected what we charge in the restaurant, but boy it puts pressure and I'm sure this isn't meant as I mean, you can't control sure. commodity prices of beef, but I think a lot of I think a lot of our customers would like to hear you talk about how commodity pricing on things like beef yeah. and pork, how does that actually work and then it, how it ends up affecting your sure. customers like me? Yeah. So uh, number when you come to you think of brisket, so because we're talking about brisket tonight, um, it is you know looking at all time highs. Um, it is, and I say all time highs. It's not at the highest, but for this time of year, it's very it's, it's a steep price. So how do you determine that price of brisket? So um, we all of the beef trades that go. So you have beef packers like Creekstone, and you have some other brands, the big four that people that are familiar with beef talk about: your Tyson, Cargill, Swift. Um, all the beef, national beef, all the beef that's bought from those guys gets traded and reported to the USDA, United States Department of Agriculture. Okay. And you can actually go online 
and see what different cuts of beef, USDA Choice and USDA Select, including ground beef, trades for every day. So my distributors all bought Creekstone beef today. That'll get, you know, that's on a different, it's a branded market. But on the commodity choice beef market, there's set pricing. So if someone buys a retailer, for instance, a Kroger buys, they put ribeyes on special and they buy truckloads of ribeyes. They bought them at, say, $10 a pound. That gets reported on the USDA. Okay. Okay. Being the cattle that we buy, like I said, you know, 100% black Angus and we get a premium for them, we are actually a certain percent or dollars per pound or cents per pound over that USDA average. So there's a lot of things that go into, there's a lot of futures trading in cattle. There's corn futures that are traded that go into the price of cattle. Um, there's obviously trucking costs, which are fixed. You know, it may be my distributors in Alabama and Georgia pay anywhere from 16 to 18 cents a pound to get truck loads. Florida's more closer to Kansas where we're at, where the processing happens is closer. But all those things play into it. Um, but one thing right now is, you know, when feed's high, and you know beef trading high brisk is going to be high so beyond those market things that we talk about brisket's become more popular we're talking about leaving texas and being more popular across the country you and i talked about a creekstone brisket user in las vegas <laughs> um and we talk about it growing in georgia um, you see briskets now and in my past in production we use briskets in grinding because the brisket fat is so great so all the demand outside of just Texas and new applications for brisket. I saw someone, I was with a, a chef partner of ours uh, with another distributor in Hilton Head Island and they're doing sous vide brisket and serving it <laughs> and searing it off and serving it almost like sure. a steak. And um, never seen that before. He was a chef from New York. So all you have new demand for brisket. So not only cattle, price are up, cattle prices are up, Creekstone, you know, we get a premium for them, but the demand for brisket has driven the price up as well. I think, uh, and it's interesting from the wholesale perspective that dynamic in play for you guys and then as it relates to us as a I guess a retail creator of an end user product that it kind of gives you an appreciation uh, I'm really talking to my friends out there now but it it gives an appreciation for why sometimes maybe uh you see when that pressure comes mm -hmm. it to the person that's buying it from you and if you don't feel like you can raise prices or you don't want to yeah. at the restaurant itself i can see how some people may succumb to the allure of cheaper i mean Let's, I'm just always am real with these folks. We have a we have a different kind of relationship yeah, here, sure. in that we just talk about the truth. Uh, definitely, I could buy less expensive briskets, sure. mm -hmm. and I wonder if sometimes when the pressure, the upward price pressure happens, if some people start doing that, and then their quality the end product mm -hmm. goes down and i don't mean that as a negative to other places that do that because it's a reality people are sure. trying to feed their family and make a living and, and believe me the restaurant working mm -hmm. is as challenging as hard yeah, and exactly. hard as it gets and i see now uh, after we've been we're almost two years in the, in here i see why like Steph and I have our own favorite restaurants and I know why sometimes we've gone into places and really loved it and then maybe we have observed uh, from time to time maybe a drop off that comes later mm -hmm. yeah and we take note of it but I understand what happens they're not it's not people being lazy or people not caring in it the price pressure gets to them but we we hold on here and keep using the premium stuff because our operating philosophy or at least i'll just speak for myself and not even include anybody else See, if i have to get cheap on stuff i'll just shut this place down and go yeah. back to the house i mean i'm sure sunday 
I'll be 63 years old on Sunday. I'm not. I'm not here to. Uh, this isn't a sport or a game. This is a passion, and if it can't be the best, I don't want to fool with it. I just lock it, lock it up before. And my wife is right behind the camera here. She would tell you this, and I mean it. And I've said this before. If I had to get cheap on you guys, and not be what. I feel proud of, then I just shut the place down. But if you're a young person trying to start up yeah. and feed your family, I see why they give in to lower quality meat that is less expensive. Yeah, it's a it's definitely a pressure point. So, I, it's hard to if you you know we we just talked about the USDA market. It moves every day, right? You guys can't change the menu board every day or every week when your price changes or you get a new delivery. So that you have to make a commitment to a product like ours and, and be ready to pay that premium and make that part of what your identity is here at the restaurant. And uh, I've been in the business, you know, long enough to see where people have went backwards and uh, especially with our product and, and wanted to come back even at the higher price. So <laughs> cause, well, because of the yeah, quality. That's right. And uh, that's one testament and a selling point for us is, you know, it. Uh, we have a partner down in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, uh, Bush Brothers. They'll be a 100-year-old company, I believe, next year. And they have a slogan on their box that says, quality doesn't cost, it pays. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, making that commitment is a testament to what you guys do because there are pressures when the market goes up, and it's tough. It's tough. Uh, margins, you can't just make the margins up elsewhere. Again, you can't move your menu all the time. But <laughs> it yeah. is what it is. Uh, I think our viewers would be interested in this question mm -hmm. because they ask me when I'm walking around the floor here talking to our folks, they ask me a lot about uh, your meat supplier. What do they think of you guys over here being with the briskets compared to Texas? I don't know what percentage of Creekstone's business is in Texas. I, I don't know what it is, but I suspect it is a huge it's a big market. It's a very number. Big market. So what does a, uh, how would a company like yours view a customer in Georgia that is building and buying a lot? How, how does the company view, not just us, but yeah. anyone outside of Texas that would have a big brisket market? How does the company, do you view that like an emerging new market or just a curiosity yeah. question. That's no. so you know. You no, know, we we love it. Number one, because it's a great selling point. Um, you know, we there's a when you got you have customers who make that commitment and and briskets and something new. It's obviously you know, we there's kind of a Creekstone family. So you know, we can say, hey, you know, Robert, you know, you heard of Wardlow's? Yeah, they you know they won best barbecue in 2023 and. People have had the experience, and you have the fans out here, and it translates to steaks. It translates to our ground beef program. So, uh, no, it's, it's I won't say free advertising. Oh, you said one of your big Atlanta customers that buys only the best steaks from you guys had said he had heard of this place. As, yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know him. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I may meet him Sunday Just when we go, go down there. Yeah. For <laughs> maybe a birthday dinner. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I guess that's how. It, I know when I was at Coca-Cola, we de right. definitely would do that. I would say, ask John about the power of having Coca-Cola in. You know, I would use testimonials from sure. other customers. That's a lot of our sales. And I would hope that maybe it is an advantage in an emerging situation where you guys could utilize a customer in a place outside of Texas and say, yeah. It can be brisket can be yeah. king at your place <laughs> yeah. if you do it. You it. do it right. Yeah, and, but. And, and that's that's one thing that you talked about Coca Cola. One thing about this job in Creekstone and sales is you know I can tell all the stories of my time in the cut room cutting other brands of beef, but the Creekstone logo and brand kind of sells itself. <laughs> and when people try it, and and as you've tried it, the consistency and the stories you tell, it's, it only helps. And uh, you know we we're excited to have. You know, to see the, the brisket outside of Texas and, the, and where it's so popular up to Kansas City. You know, we have a lot of volume that way, but uh, you know, the, the more the more stories and the story like Ward Balls are, is obviously great for us. 
Alice, I want to say, I want to acknowledge Alice's comment. Alice works here with us. She said, Creekstone brisket in LAQ makes me want to say yum. <laughs> but there's a, it's kind of an inside joke when, when I can do it back there. Uh, everybody that's on the line, right before we close for lunch, if I have a piece of brisket left, I cut it in little bite size yeah. mm -hmm. and I put it in the thing and then as soon as that door closes, we all grab us a bite yes. and yeah. eat it and and Alice's uh, little saying she does is, uh, yum, that's her <laughs> deal. And Alan says, when I recommended you guys for barbecue, I tell them if they don't like it, I give them their money back and I do that. I tell anybody with anything we serve in here, if they ask me what what I would recommend, and I tell them, and I mean it, if they don't like it, even if it's just not their to their sure. liking, we come straight back up here and trade it out because I don't want anybody leaving here, and unless they're very uh, happy. Thank you for the delicious yummies. We have a great crew. Our our crew here, we are a very, very, very close-knit family here, this crew. And I want to talk about your company for a minute okay. and uh, feedback that you may not get very often. You may not, you may not know. Hey, David Coonrad, good to see you, buddy. He's coming from upstate New York and going to come eat with us soon. Nice. Yeah. But... Um, from our perspective for Creekstone, uh, I was cooking Creekstone briskets. I mean, I've been, the restaurant's been open two years, but I've been cooking this stuff for year, many decades. And I've tried every brisket that there is. And uh, Steph will tell you, I was an exclusive user of Creekstone products in my personal life and in the fundraising things we would do out in the community. Uh, so I was predisposed to the brand, but when John Leland, when I got John's contact and said, hey, give me a call, uh, there's a big difference in buying a few briskets online, which is what I did. I didn't have a relationship with your company. I bought the product and I cooked it. Uh, <laughs> It's a whole different ball game when you're buying a hundred plus briskets a week. It's a whole different kind of thing. So, um, but Creekstone, the thing that nothing quite beats makes that taste. And there are a lot of great briskets out there in the world. Creekstone isn't the only great tasting brisket out there in the world by any means. However, it is unique versus all the others. It's unique. There is a taste that it has to be the breeding program. It has to be the breeding and feeding program. I don't know how else to explain it. But the main thing for you guys that keeps us with you, and as long as, you know, I don't see any reason we wouldn't always be with you and as long as you treat us right and the partnership is what it is now it'll always be that way but uh, it's the consistency of the product when you're going through a hundred of them I mean you're talking about we're, I'm back here cutting thousands of briskets literally thousands of them and the consistency of the product that's hard to do when Every single cow is a different animal. I mean, we're going through, what, 50, 50 plus head of cattle just for this restaurant per week. And the consistency uh, is it's outstanding. And one little story that uh, I always like to remember is... You all have never failed us on uh, fulfilling our orders. Mm -hmm. When that product comes in here on Tuesdays, can you all imagine, my friends, you imagine what we would do if we failed to get a shipment of briskets in here? 
Mm. This restaurant would be dead that way. I mean, it's dead. I, I don't even know if I'd open this place without the brisket. <coughs> but one time last year, you'll remember this. Remember, it's Wood Fruiter is our is the company that delivers these briskets. Yeah, from Birmingham, hometown. From Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And that terrible winter storm that happened out mm -hmm. near your place. Mm -hmm. And the delivery was not there. I was not going to have brisket. And my friends at Wood called and said, Robert, we got a problem. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to know that Creekstone Farms loaded a truck. See, it was delayed. The normal time to deliver for me was delayed, so it was the day before. <coughs> I imagine Wood would have the product on Friday for a delivery on Tuesday to us. Roads were impassable. Creekstone Farms loaded up a truck of our briskets for Lucky IQ in Lafette, Georgia, and Wood Fruiter got in a truck and they met halfway and then direct came straight off the road in between Kansas and Birmingham came straight off the road and delivered to us just in time to start the cooking process to be flowing on Thursday. I don't forget stuff like that. It's amazing. I don't forget stuff like that. And you know that we are 51 minutes into a normally 35-minute <laughs> show. My friend, it has been outstanding. Kim's coming about before. Kim, oh, yeah. Kim's talking about beef ribs for sure. Kimberly, no doubt. John and I were talking about the beef ribs today, that that's a, a whole different ball game for people in the state of Georgia. And Kim is our number one beef rib <laughs> fan. Maybe we'll um, have to do a, a show on beef ribs and sausages. <laughs> maybe we'll do that. John, we're going to let these beautiful folks uh, leave now. It has been a super long show for everyone that stayed all the way through. Thank you, guys. Remember, tomorrow, Reunion Thursday, 11 to 2 for lunch, 5 to 8 for dinner. This has been a fantastic show, buddy. Yeah. And thank, thank you for making the trip over here. And my friends, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, let's eat. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Nice to meet everyone.